Welcome to Celebrating Differences. This is a podcast about interesting people. My name is Preston, or Ty Tyree, and I'm your co-host for this episode of Celebrating Differences. And this is episode 100, and we have the great Jamie Gaskell. She's done amazing work as an educator, a public servant, and a bicyclist. So let's go hear what Jamie has to say about bicycling and making the world better for cyclists and all the rest of us. So my guest tonight is Jamie Gaskell. Jamie, it's been a long time. It has been, but it's great to see you, Preston. Yeah, this lady I met 20 years ago, 15 years ago. It was Uh, been a while. It's it's been been a while. while in Fort Collins, and she's doing great things. We'll talk about some of those things that she's done for the League of American Bicyclists a little bit later. But tell me something about your life. Jamie, where would you grow up? I actually grew up just on the other side of the mountain from where I am now. So I grew up in Western Colorado in Grand Junction. So kind of what used to be a small town is, you know, rapidly growing now. Yeah, Western Slope of Colorado, and now I live on the other side of the mountains in Fort Collins, Colorado. Okay. Yeah. That's a neat town. Yeah, it is. Well, both are great. So Grand Junction's great, okay. great town. Um, and because we're talking about bicycling, so I'm a great place to ride a bike, actually. And then yeah. um, Fort Collins, Fort Collins is the same. So, um, you know, just, again, great, great place to live, great place to raise a family, great place to go to school. So I came here to, to go to Colorado State University and kind of never left because I love it. <laughs> Went back to the university, yeah. Yeah, um, pretty much. When did you start riding? When did I start riding? I started riding when I was a kid. So mm-hmm. when I was maybe five years old, um, kind of the time when I started to learn how to ride a bike. And my first bike was a, a, a turquoise. Well, my first bike that I actually learned how to pedal was a turquoise bmx diamondback bike with you know pink and white tires and pink grips and foot pegs and um yeah that was the one that you know my dad ran behind me holding the seat and let go and then forgot to tell me how to stop the thing so that was interesting so i got my first experience learning how to stop was running into the back of my best friend's family station wagon and breaking the taillight. So that was, wow. that was my first experience <laughs> riding a bike. Yeah. Okay. So, so you've been biking a long time. I've been biking a long time. Yeah. I've been biking a long time and, um, and definitely biking is my, my number one passion and my, right. yeah, love for and all that it can do for people is, is certainly what, what drives me to do what I do today. So you went to high school in Grand Junction? I did. Yep. I went to high school in Grand Junction. And then jumped across the mountains to college. I did. So yeah, what brought me to Colorado State University was uh, felt like home. And then I also got on CSU's golf team. And mm-hmm. so I played played golf for CSU for, for a short time. And then not too long after I started at Colorado State University, I actually uh, decided to to quit my golf career and actually pick up racing mountain bikes oh. and um yeah big 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 switch but it that one decision actually shaped the whole rest of my life and has really kind of created the foundation for my love for for bicycling and all that it brings to people and it literally became my world so it became mm-hmm. my, my my number one passion it became my community it became my career eventually. Um, and so, yeah, it was a, a tremendous decision that I made my freshman year in college that shaped, wow. shaped the rest of my life. Yeah. So who is the one person that had the biggest impact in that decision besides you? <laughs> uh, it was the bike mechanic that I fell in love with. Uh, and actually, right before I graduated high school, I walked into a bike shop with a friend of mine she was looking for a new bike and I walked in and I, the guy that was wrenching behind the counter, I, uh, we looked at each other and there was rainbows and, you know, birds singing and hearts coming, you know, floating through the air. And we literally love it for sight, the, wow. the two of us. And he was, a uh, not only a bike mechanic, but he was, a he was a racer. So he was a expert level 
cross country racer at the time. And he's the one who got me into mountain biking, that relationship. And then that, you know, being introduced to mountain biking from him kind of, again, drove, you know, my, my decision to kind of switch what I had been doing for a long time and picking up something new. And that, um, although that relationship didn't last uh, with that particular individual, my relationship with bicycling continued on and, and is, you know, the still just as powerful today as it was when I made that decision back then. So, um, so yeah, who knew that, uh, falling in love with somebody was going to actually help me fall in love with a thing that was going to become the, one of the true passions of my life. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So fell in love with biking. I did. Uh, went to college race. Did you race for the college team or was there? Okay. Yep. So yeah, I, I raced for the club team at Colorado State University. The team still exists today. I was the vice, vice president of the cycling team. I raced collegiate nationals. Um, and I also did, uh, I toured doing a, a series at the time called the Colorado Off-Road Point Series. So I was racing co- cross country and then I was also doing a I was competing in trials, like, so, you know, like, you know, doing like balancing and, you know, tricks and stuff on your bike. And I was one of just a small handful of women in the state that did it. Um, but it was, you know, it was, it was really fun. And I, I loved the, I loved mountain biking and I loved the cycling community because to me, it was, it was a, it was a community. It was a, it was a community. Like I had an experience in other sports that I had participated in before. And at the time, you know, mountain biking was relatively new mm-hmm. as a, you know, a, a sport. And I loved, one of the things I loved most about it was like how close you could get to the pros. Like you were, you were literally racing. I mean, I was, even when I was a, you know, sport level cross country rider, I was racing alongside the pros and, and I loved that about it. I loved the, uh, just, yeah, just the down to earth nature of the sport and how it brought people together and, um, and it just became something that, that, you know, again, created the foundation for kind of the rest of my life. And so, um, yeah, so it was super fun and, and very, very gratifying. And I also really loved, you know, not only the social benefits, but the health benefits and the way it challenged me. And, you know, I, I just couldn't say enough good about it. So did your parents support you in this? They did. It was a, yeah, I, I, I'm fortunate that I had super, super supportive parents. It was, it was a very, very, very difficult decision to give up being a division one athlete. Um, and to my parents had dreams of me being a professional golfer and they, you know, had invested a lot of time and money and resources and support for my golf career. And so when I made the decision to, kind of set that aside and then really seek out, um, you know, bicycling as a, as a, my new, I guess, passion. Um, it was, it was hard for them. It was hard for my whole family. Actually, my grandparents were big golfers. They were kind of what introduced me to the support or to that sport. But I feel like <laughs> that I knew they, they were, they stood behind me and I, I really knew that they stood behind me when one, one um, weekend that my dad came to visit me in Fort Collins, he showed up at my door with a brand new mountain bike. And um, yeah, and so they had done some research and um, my, my very first mountain bike was kind of a mid-level bike. And they were like, well, if you're gonna really get into this, then we wanna support you. And he showed up with a brand spanking new mountain bike. So that's when I really knew my parents were behind my decision. Oh, wow. What, yeah. How, how wonderfully supportive, you know, just yeah. think of, think of what we could do when we have that support. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I came from a, a very loving supporting family that way, which I'm very thankful for. Great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we we're in college, we're racing, we're serious nationally. We get to play with the pros. What's next? Yeah. So for me, um, I guess when it comes to bicycling, kind of my career and the, you know, the, the direction that took me, I actually went overseas for a year. Um, so I, I left the country, I went and lived in New Zealand and then Australia. And, um, I decided at that point in time to give up competing. So I actually took a break from, from competing, you know, in, in any sport really. And, and that was a nice kind of, I guess, just a nice change of direction. I took my bike with me 
took my bike to New Zealand and Australia both. And I still rode. I still, um, you know, use it as a way to meet people, as a way to get around uh, and, and still, you know, have that be a big part of my life, but definitely took a break from the actual competition. Um, and then, so I, I studied in Christchurch, New Zealand, and then you know, took some time to travel around after that. And then I moved to Melbourne, Australia, and I worked there for, for about a half a year and then traveled all over the country um, before coming back to the States. And then, um, and then after I came back to the States, I, I, you know, finished school. I ended up meeting my, my person that I was married to for, um, for 14 years. Um, and then it was, uh, during that time that I kind of decided, made some career decisions and ended up working for REI. So I worked for REI for, um, for about 10 years off and on. And again, kind of just fostering my love for being in the outdoors, connecting people to bicycling. I mean, really that was still one of the, the biggest things there. Um, and then it was when I was working at REI that I got involved in a, a mountain biking group, a women's mountain biking group called Team Bob. And uh, Bob stands for Babes on Bikes. <laughs> and I've been a member of that group for, for over 20 years. Um, and that, that group has joining that group has been one of the best decisions of my life. Just the, everything that it's given me, um, to be able to be part of a community like that has been really tremendous. So, um, so it was that, and then gosh, I guess after that, um, I worked at REI, the, the job that I was in when my, the rest of my career kind of launched was. I was an outreach specialist at the time and doing education and um, connecting folks to things. And at the, and I also, along the way, had two kids. So I have two boys and now How they're, are they now? yeah, they're 14 and 17. And um, it was about, you know, I guess it was 20, maybe 2013 when I was, was thinking, you know, my, 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 my young, or my oldest was just getting ready to go into kindergarten. So he was going to start school. I was kind of settling into, you know, motherhood and all that kind of stuff with two boys and thinking, you know what, I want to start giving back to the community. And I, I started asking myself, well, what do I want to do if I want to get back to my community? And I thought, what I want to do is I want to make my community the best it can be for my kids to be able to ride their bike wherever they want to go. I'm like, what am I passionate about? I'm passionate about bicycling. I'm passionate about my kids. I'm passionate about making a difference in my own community. Um, so I started a bike and walk to school program at my son's elementary school. And um, that was kind of what launched like the next phase of my, um, my I guess what I say career in, in doing bicycling work. And, um, and who knew that my volunteer gig at the elementary school was gonna literally shape again, my, the, the rest of my life and, and a career that I have now, um, that I love. So, so I'm, I'm trying to, as we go through this narrative to say, okay, what is it that's different about Jamie that makes such a difference in the world? And yep. one of it is drive. And one of yep. it you said is to make the world a better place for my kids. You know, you were starting yep. with that sort of selfish, my kids, but Absolutely. no, it's gotten much bigger than that. It has gotten much bigger than that. <laughs> it's gotten bigger than you ever expected. I see. <laughs> I mean, it really has. It's it's actually kind of amazing how when you apply your passion to people, like when you combine, you know, passion and people, um, and truly, like that is. And honestly, my my passion is people. Let's just say that my passion okay. is people. And then I also happen to have this passion for bicycling. And I believe, I believe that bicycling can save the world. I really do. And I think because of how many positive things it does for people, like individuals, communities, you know, families, schools, like whatever, what other lens you want to take. Um, I really feel like that it's kind of like when you combine, you know, what really lights a fire inside of you and look for a way to to, to apply it to people, um, it can, it can go bigger than you've ever dreamed. And mm -hmm. it certainly has for me. 
Wow. Okay, so REI to bike to school. Yep. So REI to volunteering at the school. Yep. Yep. And then it landed. And then while I was there was a job that posted at the city of Fort Collins for a um, basically a, a bicycle education coordinator. So I was a I was a, a program specialist for what was then called FC Bikes, which is for Fort Collins Bikes. So the city had posted a new position looking for somebody to lead their bicycling education programming. And um, I loved working for REI. I was super happy there. I had an amazing job. I loved the company. I loved what I did. Um, but I saw this position and I thought it, it felt like a calling. It felt like it felt like an opportunity to make a bigger impact because I thought, you know, I'm doing this for my kids' school. I'm doing this at, at some level at REI which was cool because it, it reached the community. But I thought, you know, if I work for the city, then I get to actually broaden my impact. And I thought this is a, this is an opportunity and a calling. And I remember thinking when Sally Jewell, she was the CEO at REI um, for a long time and she was a, an amazing mm -hmm. human and an amazing, you know, leader for our organization. And um, she, she left REI because President Obama had asked her to serve under him. And I remember her saying, I would never leave REI unless it was for greater service to my country. And I felt the same way. Like I'm not as full as Sally Jewell, but I, you know, but it was like, but I felt the same way. I mean, I really felt the same way about that. I was like, I loved what I did, but I left REI only because I felt the calling for greater service to my community. And so I took, I applied for this job at FC Bikes and I got hired as a program specialist for them. And, um, and oh my gosh, did I fall in love with that work and that job and, you know, leading, I, I get to lead a, a 120 bike. I built a bicycle ambassador program where we would recruit volunteers and train them to teach others about bicycling and bicycling safety. And we had, you know, 120 people that, um, you know, inspired to, to join and, and be volunteers. And, and my favorite part was working with them to inspire them to inspire others. And, you know, and then um, it was through that work that um, we, you know, I started the bicycle friendly driver program, did some other kind of foundational work um, that has has really caught fire, kind of like you and I were just talking about and gotten bigger than I could have ever imagined. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't hurt that Fort Collins has this interesting brewery that supports all this work as well, right? <laughs> <laughs> Was it New Belgium yes. Brewing? Yeah. Yeah, New Belgium. And yeah, we our community is kind of known for beer and bikes. So we're, we're super fortunate that um, we're known for beer and bikes. And it also doesn't hurt that that this community, I mean, I certainly was, was one of the people who helped kind of fuel this even when I was at REI, but our community community has, you know, built a culture of bicycling and, and bicycle friendliness. And I feel like, you know, the League of American Bicyclists, Bike, Bicycle Friendly America program, we, we're a platinum level bicycle friendly community. I work now at a platinum bicycle friendly university. Um, you know, we have a ton of bicycle friendly businesses. We have amazing things going on here. Um, and, and then we have the New Belgium is actually an example of a platinum bicycle friendly um, business. So it, we have a, a culture that really embraces bicycling and understands that, you know, that committing to bicycling can make people's lives better. And I, you know, certainly my, again, my passion for people, my passion for, for the cycling has fit right into that really, really well. So when did you get your LCI? So I got uh, my LCI when it was in 2014. So I did it as part of my volunteering at um, the, the school. So being a part of Safe Routes to School, I was approached by the mm -hmm. Safe Routes to School coordinator who said, hey, you'd be a great candidate to get a lead cycling instructor you know, certification. And so I, um, so I did the training. And really, again, it was to make me a better volunteer. I just wanted to be a better volunteer. Um, so I became an LCI and when I became an LCI, I, I really had no idea, I guess, again, the, the opportunities that existed with that program, but it was through doing that program, um, and becoming an LCI that I saw like greater potential for greater impact and, you know, 
definitely not only want to become an LCI, but then was really motivated to become a coach with the league as well. And, and that has certainly been another passion of mine is to, you know, the training of the trainers to, again, kind of help, you know, inspire others to, to make the, the world better place through, through bicycling. So, so that's when I became a coach in 2017. Um, so not too terribly long after I became an LCI, I was super motivated to do it. I saw a need for it in this part of the country and, um, and also just really, you know, saw some potential to, to help grow, um, grow with the program and help grow the program. So that's been, that's been really fun as well. So the question I always like to ask people is what's different about Jamie Gaskell that makes the world a better place for the rest of us. And I think I've been hearing it, but what can you, can you articulate it? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think it's that combination of, I mean, you could, I, I, I probably talking to me, you can feel that I'm passionate. I mean, I'm a passionate person. My, my energy um, and love for this is, is certainly comes out, but my passion, connecting people to the opportunities to help them live their best lives. And I really believe, I really believe in the, the work that I do in transportation specifically. And my, my work in transportation goes well beyond bicycling. Now I'm a, I work in, you know, in transportation demand management. And I feel like it's that it's, it's understanding how to, to match people with the opportunities through transportation, because transportation affects everyone's lives, um, to to help them live their best lives and and inspire them to think about things in a different way, think about transportation in a different way, to you know to make the world a better place. And I feel like um, you know there's I have story after story working with individuals, and I know you do too, Preston, because you've been doing this way longer than I have, but that just like literally bring tears to my eyes because it, the, when you, when you, when you connect people with that, you know, fire, um, it's, it's such a powerful thing. And it, and it gives me goosebumps to think that, you know, that I could help do that. So I think that's what it is. It's identifying those things in people and inspiring, you know, them to try something new, um, to make their world better, which then makes the world a better place. Wow. <laughs> That's all mm -hmm. I can say as well. Let's, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to take a break here. We're going to go look at the, the work you've actually done in this bicycle sure. friendly driver program. What's, you know, what's that bicycle friendly drivers? What are you crazy? Yeah, that's kind of thing. So let's go look at um, the website for the League of American Bicyclists. And we're going to bring up the, the front part of it. Yep. Uh, here where it says bicycle friendly driver. And that's, if you go to the website, bikeleague.org, it's home. Then you go to About Smart Cycling, which is right there. And then you get Bicycle Friendly Driver. So here's a Bicycle Friendly Driver training that was developed by you. Yeah, so so it was, it was it, I kind of led that effort and certainly, um, certainly with help from others in this community. Um, but the Bicycle Friendly Driver was born out of community desire to have safer experiences for people on bikes. Um, and what happened was the, the year that, that we developed this program, we had two fatalities in our community, two bicyclists who were hit and killed. And one of them was a friend of mine. And um, but these two fatalities that happened, you know, relatively close together in time, um, drove uh, the, the community to, to pull together and have a, a large community meeting where there were several hundred people to have a discussion about how do we make this never happen again. And in that community meeting, one of the, the big takeaways was that people really saw the opportunity to try to edge their vehicles, how to share the road safety with people on bikes. And so our community already had a, we, you know, when I was working at the city, um, and we work with our local nonprofit advocacy group, like Fort Collins. Um, we already had a, like the foundation of, of a curriculum for this program, um, but the community meeting kind of elevated it to say, you know what, we need to do more with this. And so that spurred a conversation with myself, um, a, a 
colleague of mine who's a bicycle ambassador. He was a bicycle ambassador at the time, Scott Sample. Um, and then, you know, some of the folks who worked at Bike for Collins. And, and what we decided was that we needed to, to create a program that had a little more umph to it. And that wasn't just this, you know, little class we offered to a few people here and there. Um, and so what we did was we took the curriculum that we already, already had, took a really hard look at it and said, what are all the situations that we need to educate people about to help them never be involved in crashes? So it was a, what we did was we looked at data. We looked at our city's data in particular and looked at the crashes that we were seeing with people riding bikes and people driving cars. And, and then we kind of picked those apart and said, what are the, what are the behaviors that are contributing to these, these crashes happening? And then we, we, we built this, this whole curriculum based on that. And then in addition to that, we were like, okay, now how do we get people to take it? <laughs> how do we get people to, how do we get people to actually do this course? Right. And what we, our idea was, was let's, let's, let's assign a certification to it. Let's put a certification behind it that we can then, you know, give some some credibility to to what we're teaching folks and then you know the idea was like hey what if the league of american bicycles wants to get behind this what if insurance companies want to get behind this you know how do we how do we really give some some power to this so to test it out we did we talked to the league some which they really loved the idea and then to 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 test it out and see if it really worked in our community we started by going to businesses that had people mm -hmm. who who had who, who drove as part of their job. Cause the idea behind that was these are the people that are behind the wheel of vehicles more than anybody else. Okay. So how do we get to them first? And actually new Belgium was one of the very first people who tested this out with us. Cause they have drivers who, who deliver sure. their beer. So, so they were one of the first businesses that tested it out. And then we went to all these different organizations and we literally, I mean, and I mean, literally we're knocking on doors of, trailers where you know like at construction sites and you know like all these places we're thinking well how do we get a variety of employers who have people who drive as part of their job maybe it's like dump truck drivers and you know like people who have fleets we we trained the city of fort collins um employees we did we did hundreds and hundreds of people in this first year and then bring them we celebrated the organizations who committed to bringing this education to their their staff we gave them public recognition we said well done to these organizations who've committed to ha to having their their drivers be safer, to helping our community be a safer place, and to being more welcoming to to people who are riding bikes, and we had incredible success. Like we increased the numbers of people that we reached with our education by six hundred percent. We like it was it was it blew our expectations out of the water. And what we discovered was that we had this foundational curriculum that the principles were built on smart cycling that came from the league combined with our crash data and and so we had this this curriculum that we were we were training people we were educating cyclists but now we were educating everyone so we were getting the people who drive the people who drive and ride and the people who ride we're getting everyone with this class and teaching everyone how to share the road safely with each other. And, and with and the so same message. With so the same message. It's all message. the same message. Yeah. It's all the same message. So the success was tremendous. Um, the program itself was partially funded with federal dollars. And so it, that essentially makes it public property. Um, and so that combined with the fact that we just had this tremendous success, we knew we had something special. We really knew that what we were doing was good and that it was working. So I actually created a toolkit for communities to use to try to launch similar programs in their own um, communities and then brought it to the um, to the National Bike Summit and debuted the toolkit at the National Bike Summit. And wowie, like who knew? Who knew <laughs> that that would light the humongous fire that is still burning today? And this was yeah. This was, you know, how, gosh, how many years ago now? I can't even, seven, eight years ago, and well, it's you, still you, growing. Yeah, you did the, uh, I think, let's see, you did the the videos that are up on the site are only two years yeah. old. But yeah. uh, it, 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 I know I was out in Fort Collins years ago, and I was there right after you did, I think, your first wave of businesses. 
is yep. when we came out for that program and yep. met you and found out about this. And it's just been, I mean, wow. And it, before I publish this, I will put a picture of my automobile with the Bicycle Finley Driver logo yeah. in the windshield. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I've been very proud of that, having that on my windshield. Yeah. Which, which I'm glad you mentioned that too, Preston, because that was part of it too, was the idea was that when people got certified as, as bicycle friendly drivers, they get a certificate and then they would get a sticker as well. And that sticker was a way to, again, kind of like, you know, like drive this recognition of this really important program. Like all of our, our, our bus drivers here in Fort Collins go through this training as part of the new hire and they have bicycle friendly driver stickers on the back of the buses. Right. Which is so cool. Right. So, so it's one of those things that, yeah, we, we were trying to find ways to continue building the momentum. It's like, okay, we're training these people. Now, how do we continue to build the momentum, recognize people for investing the time in this and, and then, you know, reward people for, for the work that they're, they're doing to try to be safe road users. And, and so it's been, it's been pretty outstanding and, and who knew too, that it would lead to, I, the last that I knew, it had spread to 47 states and five different countries is being translated into different languages. It's got, it's gotten grants funded, it, uh, you know, from Rhode Island to, you know, Oregon, they have the Oregon friendly driver, the, you know, bicycle car, or yeah, bicycle Colorado has done an online version of it that um, they digitized and gamified, you know, it, it's, it's really been tremendous to see something that, you know, we just knew it was special. We knew it was good, but I had no idea it was that good, Preston. That it was, it was, oh, pretty, it was pretty awesome. It was pretty it awesome. Is, and then, of course, so the good. league has adopted it, too. So yeah. it's, been, it's been really rewarding to see it continue to grow. Yeah, the league has adopted it. Here's the, the main page. Yep. But if you click on online via the league's learning center down there in the middle, you get to this page which says right here, Bicycle Friendly Driver. It's part of the Learning Center. And you get all that kind of stuff going on. Uh, and it's, this is interesting because these are, you know, the league's offerings. Here's the basic smart cycling. Here's the Learn to Ride and the Bicycle Friendly Driver right next to each other. And then down at the bottom, we've got an e-bike, which is fairly new. Smart cycling tips yeah. for older adults. Yeah. And then the the on bike class uh and if you click on that bicycle friendly driver thing you go to this page where you can actually take the course online you have to register and get in but you can actually go through one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve units for yep. uh being a bicycle friendly driver and then you get a certificate and a, a sticker and it's one of those peel off stickers so you can move it yep. car to car yeah yep <laughs> yeah. yep so yeah yeah it's uh that's that's pretty doggone impressive you just said 47 states and five countries the the last that i knew from when i i when when we created that toolkit um we made a kind of our online request form for it and um that was that was the collected data for, but it's who, who knows where it's at now. <laughs> I mean, I, I keep hearing about. I mean, I keep hearing about it. I was at a conference. Um, I was at a conference a few weeks ago, and I was in the, I was in a session, and somebody you know raised. They were talking about how do we educate people about you know sharing their roads. And somebody raised the other, Well, we have this program in Oregon called bicycle. You know, bicycle friendly driver. You know, whatever. And like Oregon friendly driver is what they call it there, but. And, and I was like, there it is, you know, I mean, it just keeps coming up. So it, it's, it's been fun to, to just see. Um, and then of course, you know, the, the league has done a ton with it. The league also ed educates the, the LCIs yep. to offer it in person, um, which is really great. So I feel like there's, there's lots of opportunities for this to get out there and, you know, kind of make communities better. And I, and I love, one of the things that I really love about it too, is that the concepts are transferable to communities, but it, it's even more impactful when you use your own community's data to inform, you know, the, the specific examples that you highlight. And so that's one of the things that, um, you know, I've seen kind of be beneficial 
for, for folks who continue to offer it and continue to innovate with it. What's next? Oh man. So, um, well, I, so now I work at Colorado State University and, um, and also still doing some coaching and that kind of thing. And um, I'm, I'm absolutely loving my, my work there. Like I mentioned before, I work in transportation demand management and um, really trying to make a difference for the, you know, the university community. Um, and I'm still, you know, an active member of the league. I'm also an active member of the Association for Commuter Transportation. And what's kind of cool is that I get to take all this work that I've been doing and, you know, that my foundation is in bicycling, but I expanded it to all forms of transportation. And it's been really great to, to you know, to apply that at, at, a, at a, the next level, I guess, and, and really working with individuals wherever they're at and, and inspiring them to, you know, use transportation to enhance their lives. So, um, so for me, it's, it's continuing to, to do that work, not only at the university, but at the national level and even the international level. I've been doing, uh, you know, some, some, some work there. Um, and it's been, it's been really fun. And I, every day I wake up and I love what I do and I love the people I work with. I love the, the folks who, who are, who are doing this alongside me, um, because it's, it's really gratifying and, and meaningful. And I'm happy to say both my kids are out in cycle commuters. So, you know, I started with the kids, right. And now they're. They're the ones, um, and my, I have a 17 year old who has a driver's license and he's a bicycle friendly driver. So, you know, yes. he, he understands, he gets it right. Yes. Right. So it comes full circle. Um, so, so yeah, so I think that's, what's next for me is just continuing to inspire from a different angle and kind of a, a different, different position. Um, but still trying to have, have an impact wherever I'm working. Yeah. When so. I went online and looked up looked you up besides the different names uh, <laughs> yeah it's changed uh, a little bit here and there yeah. uh, <laughs> but it it really is an impressive impressive outline that i i found online about your work with the this city and the work with the college of the university and uh you know i was i was looking trying to look back and figure out what that first time that i came and you took us riding around fort collins and we did i think we did in the lci seminar and that was amazing uh, yeah. to see Fort Collins and see what y'all have done and everything. And that was a long time ago. And, you know, you've been doing it ever since and it's getting better and better. So, Oh my gosh, you have to come back, Preston, because we, the, our community continues to get better and better and evolve. And um, we're, we're working on some, I mean, we've been working on some great stuff and we're working on even more great stuff. And it's been fun to, to learn from other communities, but also to kind of help, help, you know, show off what we do to inspire others across mm. the country. So yeah, it's been really, really fun to, to continue to, to build on that momentum. And yeah, we'd love to have you back. Come, come, come I, over and uh, I we'll, gotta come we'll, play. We'll do yeah. <laughs> you do have to come play. <laughs> to come play. But you I was do. thinking when you were looking through all of those different offerings from the league, and yep. this is probably the only one that has such an individualized background and creation. The rest of them were, you know, hundreds of people created those things. You know, the, the uh, aging drivers, the older drivers, yep. done by AARP, you know, mm -hmm. and got that involved and all that kind of stuff. But here's something that you did, basically. Yep. Yeah. with a group there in Fort Collins and made it happen. And it's just, I've always been so impressed. It's just, yeah, wow. thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. It's a, it's, I feel like, again, it's one of those things where you, when you recognize that you, you have something that can truly make an impact. I think the best thing you can do with it is share it. And we, you know, we felt pretty strongly that, that it would benefit everyone, you know, all people, if we, if we said, you know, we've got this concept that has really, I really think it's kind of reshaped how we think about doing this kind of education and, and it's, it's forced us to, to look wrong. I think that's been a huge benefit. And so I, I think one of the best things we ever did was put it in a way that was easy to share with people. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so thrilled that the league and, you know, others have, have really gotten behind 
I'm trying to do the same thing. So uh, yeah, and I and I hope to. I mean, I hope to create other things that we can do that with too. I you know other other programs and things that that work. Like when it works, let's share it with others so that we can you know we can all benefit from it. I always say, hey, let's do your R and D. And when I when I say R and D, I mean rip off and duplicate. If it works for somebody else, duplicate <laughs> it, it where you're yes. at. Do uh, it, do it. Yeah. And in this case, do your R and D. Rip off and duplicate yeah. bicycle friendly driver because it's awesome. It, yeah. That's cool. So yeah. go back to your grandparents. Do you remember okay. them? Did yeah, you know I them? still have. Yeah, so I have my 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 mom's mom and dad. I was I I, I knew very well. My my mom's mom is actually still alive. She's mm -hmm. ninety five. Wow. Um, my mom's my yeah, my mom's dad passed away in twenty twenty two. My dad's parents I didn't know, but my my mom's parents I did. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I assume mm -hmm. that this has been passed down because that's the this kind of tenacity this kind of dedication to the people doesn't just happen and i'm assuming it came down from your grandparents through your parents and it was just part of what you were expected to do is that reasonable you know that's interesting when you say that i guess i hadn't really thought about that but it's it's a little bit ironic one that my name is Gaskill. Uh, my last name is, you know, gas kill, like I'm trying to like change the way, you know, but my, um, my grandparents actually, they're, they're, they, I've never met two harder working human beings in my entire life. And they actually own their own service stations. So they were in the, yeah, they were in the automobile industry and fixing cars and, and, you know, keeping people running and they worked 16 hours a day for goodness knows how many years and worked literally just worked and worked and worked and, and gave everything, gave their heart and soul to the, the businesses that they ran and the people that they served. And you're right about that. There was a drive there and, a, you know, and, a, and I guess also I want to say a love for people because um, a love for people and a love for the work. My, my grandpa always told me, if you don't love your job, then do your do your boss and yourself a favor and go do something else, yeah. right? Yeah. So he, yeah. I mean, he he, and 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 I agree with that. I agree with that. And um, so yeah, they, you're. I think you're right. And then I think I think the other, my mom and dad were very supportive people, but my dad, I think, was one that, that really, from very very young age, told me anything that you set your mind to, and really inspired both my brother and I to, you know, to. To, to go big and um, and I I knew that I I wanted to to really make an impact in people's lives and somehow I didn't know exactly what that was going to look like but I certainly but, knew but you um, did it I, yes yeah, <laughs> you yeah. did it and I, and I hope I still am I mean I hope I still am you got a few um, years left yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> well and I look forward to you know spending them to with yeah, yeah with with people because I really enjoy that's my favorite part how old are you now Jamie I am 45. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> I remember a story. My grandfather was uh, president of the bank during the Depression. And right. And one of the stories that somebody told me about him, I uh, said, oh, you're Jake's grandson. I said, yeah. He said, you know, he really helped me. I said, what? And he said, he gave me a loan on a handshake in the middle of the Depression when I absolutely needed it to make my business survive. And he just, we just did it. And he got in trouble for, for mm -hmm. doing that, but it was the right thing to do. It was and, the right thing to do. You know, and the guy is, you know, was successful and he's giving back his well. You know, he is giving back now. So, yeah, it, you know, it's a generational thing. And it's, yeah. uh, it's so good to see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, anything else? One last thing that we haven't talked about that, you know, this is called celebrating differences. What's different about you that you'd like to celebrate? What's different? Well, I, so I, I told my, my kids that I was, I was doing this and I asked them to, uh, to, to what's different about me that, and I, I said that makes the world a better place. And my, my oldest, he didn't even skip a beat. He said, your laugh, mom, your laugh. He said, he said, no matter where you are, 
I, we know you're there because of your laugh, because my laugh is big and it's loud and it comes from the heart. And, um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a, a, an external way to show my joy for, for connecting with people and life and, um, having fun because I don't believe in doing it if, if it isn't, you know, at least a little bit fun. So yeah, so it, uh, it, it brightens, it brightens the space. That, that may be the title of this episode. By the way, this is episode number 100 of this podcast. Oh, so congratulations. We're, at, we're excited. Amazing. Yeah, I'm we're so excited for this, you. Yeah. this milestone. And it's you. Yeah, you know, so it's pretty special. Aww, I feel Thank you. so honored. Bye-bye. Yeah, thanks, Preston. Thanks for reaching out. And it's, it's really a pleasure. Take care. Good. I'll let you know when it goes out. Wow. I knew of Jamie, but I didn't realize all of the things she had done. That's pretty impressive. And I'm looking forward to get to know her better as the years go by. I hope you had a great time listening to Celebrating Differences. Please subscribe down below and leave comments. One of the comments you can talk about is, what did you get from Jamie's talk that will change the way you bicycle? Okay, so thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful day.